Hey everybody, this is Dr. Monique Adu. This is part three of our breastfeeding series. I wanted to go ahead and give you some practical tips that will be useful for you, especially for new moms trying to initiate the breastfeeding process. So uh, first one is definitely as soon as you can, when baby is born, go ahead and do that skin to skin contact that you often hear. Um, spoken about. That is so important. They are going to want to feel the warmth of your skin. They want to go ahead and hear your heartbeat the same way they heard it when they were in your tummies. And it's just going to be comforting for them and it's going to help you initiate the breastfeeding process and help them to go on and try to latch on as soon as you can. Put them on skin to skin and initiate that breastfeeding process. They will definitely um, want to get started if everything is medically sound. Um, usually babies will want to go ahead and root towards that breast and get fed as soon as they can. So um, once you're in that hospital and everything is fine, go ahead and start. The second one is make sure that you take advantage of the lactation consultants that are in the hospital. They often have these professionals there that have lots and lots of experience in helping moms get ahead on with the breastfeeding process. So definitely keep them in mind. You know, don't reject if they come. Even you might think you're the most prepared person in the world when it comes to this, but you know, we can all learn something new every day. That's one thing I've learned, you know, in my um, young lifetime. I have learned that there's just so much more that you can learn. Even the most trained people, they can even learn even more each day. So never, you know, shut the door on information. That's how we grow. So definitely, if there's a lactation consultant for you, take them. Take them in on their offer and listen, at least listen to what they have to say. You might find that some of the tips that they provide are useful for you. That third tip is to ensure that you speak with your physician about any potential medications that can affect your breast milk because medicines that you use may not be safe and they can be transmitted onwards through that breast milk and you would not want your baby to be exposed to them. So ensure that if you are on any medications, ensure that your doctor is okay with you to still breastfeed. And if not, then uh, try to work out a process where maybe you can breastfeed at a later time after the medication has already been metabolized and outside of your system. So ensure that you don't have anything that can be unsafe. Um, for the baby with regards to medications that you're taking. Fourth thing is to definitely, um, I know lots of us like that coffee, that morning cup of coffee, um, especially after we've had our babies, we want to go ahead and get back into our routine, something that we might have missed, but caffeine can actually be um, not the best idea in high amounts in breastfeeding moms because some can get transmitted onwards through that breast milk and can upset their sleeping activities. You know, it is basically like a stimulant type of chemical and that can affect them. So, you know, be careful with the amount of caffeine that you're taking in. I would take in no more than about six to eight ounces. That's for the whole day now, you know, and if you can really try to avoid it. Um, because that can actually encourage dehydration for you if you're drinking too much. Um, so definitely try not to drink too much of that uh, when you are trying to initiate the breastfeeding process. A uh, few more things. Try to avoid uh, pacifiers in those first few days because they are trying to get used to the latching on and the breast and you don't want to initiate something else that can be um, an effect to what you're doing. So try to avoid the pacifiers within the first few days of life, you know, if you can. Now the positioning is very, very, very important. That was a struggle for me in terms of finding the right hold and the right position, comfortable position for me and for baby because a comfortable you is most likely going to translate to a comfortable baby and that's going to translate to successful breastfeeding. So definitely 
you know, be aware of the different types of positions that are out there. There are quite a few common ones. There is the football hold as one. There's the cradle hold. There is the side lying and cross cradle. And this is just a picture, if you can see it, of each one of those. Um, if it's not clear to you, I'm going to definitely go ahead and post a link where you can see some of the positions for um, breastfeeding. But those are just a few for you to take a quick look. So, you know, don't get set on just one position. There are definitely a few that you can look into that may be beneficial for you and baby in terms of both of your comfort. So if you feel uncomfortable, that means you should reposition yourself because you're most likely not going to have a successful time for you or for baby. So keep positions in mind and get help. Once again, from the lactation consultant when finding what is the best and most comfortable breastfeeding position for you. And then um, another point is to ensure that you have the appropriate supplies that you might need, especially if you wanted to start pumping at the same time. Make sure that you have a sufficient pump, one that works effectively. You know, there are many different types out there from the manual to um, single to double electronic pumps. There are many different varieties and brands. So, you know, everyone is different. I tried many, many different ones until I settled on one that I found was just perfect for me. Um, and that was after a lot of trial and error. I remember now with my three, I tried many different things. So I know um, that there are many things out there, many products out there, and you just kind of have to try and see which one works best for you. But there are definitely options out there, so you just gotta keep yourself ready and prepared. And that also means if you are gonna pump, make sure that you have the proper storage bags and systems. You don't wanna just store your milk in any old bottle. It needs to be sterile um, equipment and ones that will cause no leakage and no bacterium to enter into them because of course you don't wanna feed spoiled milk or, you know, contaminated milk to your infant. So ensure that you have the appropriate equipment available to be able to pump and store if, if ever that you may need to do so. Of course, another thing too is that um, sometimes with the frequent breastfeeding and pumping, the nipple area may tend to get kind of sore, cracked, and even bleed sometimes. You might even see a little bit of bloody fluid in the milk. Don't get scared. That happens to many of us. Happened to me too. Um, milk may even look a little pinkish, but usually it will taper off. It shouldn't look persistently like that. Then that would be a problem. But definitely the nipples can get cracked sometimes. Very sore and painful. Oh, so painful. And there are products out there that contain lanolin that can help to kind of just keep the area supple and moist and they are safe for even baby to latch on at the same time. Just a thin layer on there and baby can latch on so that you are comfortable and then can deliver the breast milk to baby more effectively. So, you know, don't be hurting um, and not having anything to help yourself with. There are products out there that can help to soothe the pain that comes with sometimes the breastfeeding. But honestly, once you start to get the proper positioning and routine down, proper latch on, then you will have less pain and less of the issues that come with the sore and cracked um, nipples. And also ensure that baby's mouth is appropriately onto the breast. It should not be at the tip of the nipple. That is going to be very painful. The mouth should be wide open, wide open, get their head back and latch on well, covering over that whole areola if possible. That way you know that they're having good compression of the breast and the milk flow will be the most efficient and that will also help to prevent blocked tear ducts, which can be very painful too and can lead to mastitis, which is a very swollen and inflamed breast tissue. And that can even lead to fever and infection if you're not careful. So a good positioning, good latching on, 
good mechanics of getting the baby's mouth onto the breast is the best preventative measure in preventing any of the sequelae that can happen from inflammation, blocked tear ducts, and so forth. So that's so important to, to be aware of. And then you may hear from, you know, some moms that they tried some supplements to help increase their milk supply. Um, most commonly you hear about fenugreek, uh, milk thistle, or mother's milk. Um, those are a few, but really there's not that, that much scientific evidence out there to show that it can actually increase one's milk supply in great amounts. So really, we never want to rely on outside and external supplements. The main thing that we want to do to increase our milk supply, like I was telling you before, is to ensure that you feed readily, ensure that you do it routinely. That's going to send a signal to your brain to release certain chemicals, for example, oxytocin, that then cause you to have milk, milk let down. Um, from increasing prolactin, another hormone in our body. And, you know, once we get everything straight with our own routine, the body and all the signals and chemicals will then start to initiate their processes and you will be a happy mommy and you'll have a well-fed baby. So you don't necessarily need supplementary products to get that done. Just take care of yourself and do your do your thing. Do your routine thing and baby will do are the same for you. And then, you know, lastly, once again, is to keep our health in mind. Hydrate yourself. Feed yourself when you need. You, your baby needs to be fed, but you need to make sure you feed yourself too. Healthy foods, you know, stay away from processed foods. Try to do organic products if you can um, for yourself and your family, especially for baby too, as they grow. Make sure that you have healthy and well-balanced meals, and that is going to help you to get the most um, sufficient nutrition for yourself, and then that way you can therefore provide the best for your baby. So I hope that that was just a quick and valuable snapshot for you. If you have any questions, you know, once again, feel free to just send me a message. And then also, of course, I send little articles periodically online that deal with a lot of the things that I talk about. So definitely take a quick peek at my page. And then you can also find me on YouTube and Twitter. So definitely um, avail yourself to the resources that are out there. And I hope that this was helpful for you. And happy breastfeeding!